Hello, welcome back to MLS QR. Quick review of the anemias and intrinsic red blood cell membrane defects. And we'll talk about it from a point of view of a clinical laboratorian. Anemias with membrane defects are hemolytic anemias that are intrinsic with a high retic count, and they are normal acidic and normal chromate. We will focus on hereditary spherocytosis, leptocytosis, stomatocytosis, and paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, which is an acquired hemolytic anemia. The red blood cell design is amazing, where form follows function. It is a biconcave disc, 7 to 8 microns in diameter, with a volume 76 to 100 femtiliters, and the surface area is enhanced with the biconcave shift by more than 40% than a sphere, and that is for two important reasons. The first is that the oxygen carbon dioxide exchange in the pulmonary capillary beds is enhanced, as well as its delivery to our tissues. And second is its deformability. It is very pliant and elastic, allowing it to pass through tight, narrow capillary beds, fenestrations, and tight splenic spores, and this will enhance its survivability. As these tough, durable red blood cells course through our circulation for 120 days, it encounters a major obstacle in our body, and that is the spleen. The spleen plays a key role in the pathophysiology of red blood cell membrane defects. It is a vital but not essential organ, and it is an indiscriminate, spongy filter of the circulating blood. As blood circulation slowly filters through the splenic sinusoids, circulation slows down considerably, and this is an extremely harsh environment for red blood cells. It is very hypoglycemic, hypoxic and acidic, and this will take out the weak, the old, and the, the infected red blood cells with inclusions and including the spherocytes. They become trapped and hemolyzed, and this is known as the splenic function of culling and pitting. Normal flexible erythrocytes will go through tiny narrow capillaries and go through fenestration, sinusoids, and pores of the spleen and liver without any problem. However, spherocytes with their inflexible shape have a problem. Some spherocytes barely make it through the splenic cords, while the unlucky spherocytes hemolyze. Hence, we will see classical clinical lab signs of hemolysis. Intracellular LDH and potassium of the red cell will spill into the plasma, as well as free hemoglobin taken up by haptoglobin, and the UA will show blood and urobilinogen, which is made by the liver, which will also make bilirubin. And you will see a high unconjugated bilirubin demonstrated by a high indirect bile. The anemia will manifest itself as a low hemoglobin hematocrit, and the bone marrow will respond with a high retic count, and the peripheral blood smear may show signs of hemolysis. To understand hereditary spherocytosis and hereditary leptocytosis, let's focus at the molecular level of the red blood cell membrane. We see the phospholipid bilayer with cholesterol and transmembrane proteins, as well as the underlying cytoskeleton. Key features include band three transmembrane proteins, which is bound to ancrin, which anchors the transmembrane proteins to spectrin, which has an alpha and beta spiral. Spectrin is bound to demitin, as well as tropomyosin, tropomodulin, and actin. Interesting to note, you see some of these proteins in the thin filaments of muscle. 
It may be fascinating to note the complexity of the red blood cell membrane molecular biology, but let's focus on the essential ones that we need to know for our topic. For our topic, let's focus on these red blood cell membrane proteins. If we do serum protein electrophoresis, we can see these bands shown on the left with the Kamasi blue stain and glycophorins ABC on the right using a PAS stain. The blue arrows point to the key proteins that are missing or defective in hereditary spherocytosis and hereditary liptocytosis. These are the highlights of hereditary spherocytosis. Note that the MCHC is increased, and this is the only anemia with this feature. And you'll see also in the peripheral blood smear spherocytes as well as polychromatia. And using the serum protein electrophoresis, you'll see abnormal spectra in band 3, angrin, and protein 4.2. The osmotic fragility test is a historical test that is still used in some reference labs for diagnosing hereditary spherocytosis. Although it is fairly nonspecific, it's based on the principle where if you have cells in normal saline, as you go into a hypotonic solution, they'll fill up like a water balloon being filled up and they'll eventually pop and hemolyze. And then you'll see compared to the control, spherocytes in the osmotic fragility test will survive in normal saline 0.90% sodium chloride, whereas when you go into a hypotonic solution, they'll swell and pop right away because they don't have much room to expand. You can graph the osmotic fragility test with percent hemolysis versus sodium chloride concentration, and then you'll readily see that the cells with spherocytes are shifted to the left and then they will hemolyze easily in hypotonic solution. The contemporary test is flow cytometry using eosin 5 malleamide binding, and this fluorescent dye binds to band 3 proteins. In flow cytometry, the fluorescent signals represent cell populations of the target antigen. In this case, we're looking at those cells with band 3 protein antigen. However, in hereditary spherocytosis, you will see band 3 proteins missing, and so the conjugated dye will not be able to attach to the antigen, and so you'll see less signal detection. Hereditary liptocytosis has uh, lipocytes 15 to 100%, and this myelinemia will uh, have a lot of uh, lipocytes on the peripheral blood smear, as well as you'll see on the protein electrophoresis abnormal spectrum and protein 4.1 defect. In hereditary stomatocytosis, the pathology is abnormal sodium potassium permeability. And the peripheral blood smear, you see a lot of stomatocytes. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is an acquired defect, not inherited. Uh, these patients are missing a protective protein against complement. So then their red blood cells will hemolyze when complement membrane attack units come over and they're very susceptible. And flow cytometry will show a negative expression for CD55 and CD59 in a fluorescent aerolysin positive test. Let's review some questions and answers that are modeled after ACP Board of Certification Study Guide. And they are similar with the concepts, but not identical.
Thanks for your time and support, and I hope to see you.